Hi everyone, I'm Doc Ken and welcome to Chapter 5 of Science, Technology and Society entitled The Nano World. So what are the learning outcomes for this chapter? One is to define the major potential and realize impacts of nanotechnology on society. Two, analyze nanotechnology through the conceptual STS lenses. And three, examine the costs and benefits to society of nanotechnology. Just how small is nano? In the international system of units, the prefix nano means 1 billion or 10 raised to negative 9. Therefore, 1 nanometer is 1 billion of a meter. It's difficult to imagine just how small that is. So here are some examples. A sheet of paper is about 100,000 nanometers thick. A strand of human DNA is 2.5 nanometers in diameter. There are 25,400,000 nanometers in one inch. A human hair is approximately 80,000 to 100,000 nanometers wide. A single gold atom is about a third of a nanometer in diameter. On a comparative scale, if the diameter of a marble was 1 nanometer, then the diameter of the earth would be about 1 meter. And lastly, 1 nanometer is about as long as your fingernail grows in 1 second. Next, let's talk about nanoscience and nanotechnology. When we talk about nanoscience, it is the study of structures and materials on an ultra-small scale and the unique and interesting properties these materials demonstrate. Nanoscience is cross-disciplinary, meaning scientists from a range of fields including chemistry, physics, biology, medicine, computing, material science, and engineering are studying it and using it to better understand our world. Next, nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is the application of nanoscience leading to the use of new nanomaterials and nanosized components in useful products. Nanotechnology will eventually provide us with the ability to design custom-made materials and products with the new enhanced properties, new nanoelectronics components, new types of smart medicines and sensors, and even interfaces between electronics and biological systems. Uh, these newborn scientific disciplines are situated at the interface between physics, chemistry, material science, microelectronics, biochemistry, and biotechnology. Control of these disciplines therefore requires an academic and multidisciplinary scientific education. Although nanotechnology is a fairly new science, the cheap concepts have been developing over the course of 50 years. Interestingly, we have been employing nanotechnology for over a thousand years, from painting to making steel. Although, what has changed recently is our ability to manipulate and engineer in the nanometer scale. One of the most documented examples of nanotechnology known in history is medieval stained glass artisans. They were the first nanotechnologies as they, although unaware, trapped gold nanoparticles in the glass matrix in order to generate the ruby red color in the windows. Medieval stained glass windows are examples of how technology was used in the pre-modern era. Stained glass windows were used predominantly in churches but were also found in wealthy domestic settings and public buildings such as Town halls. Based on the latest researches, nanotechnology helps enhance the following quality. One is biomaterials. Based on the latest research, biomaterials include living tissue and artificial materials used for the repair, replacement, and stimulation of biological systems. Nanotechnology involves the development and use of technologies that operate on the nanometer length scale around the size of a large biomolecule. These nanobiomaterials are being used in healthcare such as imaging tools, as bioengineering to detect diseases, monitoring, prevention, and treatment of several diseases. Next in line, ceramics. 
Nanoceramics are type of nanoparticle first discovered in the early 1980s. A good example of this is the nanoceramics paint coating. This is being used as a car paint coating to provide strong protection and shield to keep cars paint shiny and to look brand new. A nanoceramic coating are scientifically formulated solution meant to penetrate a microscopic imperfections fill those gaps in the top range of the nanoscale and provide a layer of protection that's nearly as strong as solid. Ceramic coating work by bonding with the existing surface to form a protective nanoceramic shield on the surface. Third, metals. Baseball bats, tennis, and badminton rackets, racing bicycles, etc. are some of the sporting equipment whose performance and durability are being improved with the help of nanotechnology. It increases the strength of the metal 200 times by rolling up the sheets of carbon atoms. What do you mean by rolling up the sheets of carbon atoms? Carbon nanotubes are cylindrically molecules that consist of rolled up sheets of single layer carbon atoms. They can be single walled carbon nanotubes with a diameter of 0.5 to 1.5 nanometer or multi walled consisting of several concentrically interlinked nanotubes with diameter reaching more than 100 nanometer. Their length can reach several micrometers or even millimeters. The arrangement of the structure of materials at the nanoscale can change its strength. The structure of a material at the nanoscale can dramatically change how it behaves. For example, pencils contain graphite, which is made up of carbon atoms that arrange in sheets and can easily slide around. It's easy to write with a pencil because the graphite sheets easily rub up onto paper. Carbon atoms, however, also make up some of the world's strongest materials. Yes, strongest materials, such as diamonds. In diamonds, carbon atoms are tightly packed together, making them so hard that they can cut steel. Four polymers. To keep pace with the constant miniaturization of computer chips, transistors must have increasingly small features. The use of carbon nanotubes is one technology that looks able to maintain the current pace of technology advancement by providing a sensible approach to smaller, faster transistors. Polymers through nanotechnology has been used to strengthen computer chips, especially its design. Let's now move on to the commercial applications of nanotechnology. Some of the commercial applications of nanomaterials are 1. Sunscreens Nanotechnology has been used in sunscreens for many years. To date, nanoparticles used in sunscreens do not pose a risk. Sunscreens provide protection from harmful UV rays. This has been possible through the use of nanosized zinc oxide and titanium oxide, which absorbs UV rays made it ultraviolet resistance. And lastly, self-cleaning windows. Self-cleaning windows are glass coated with vanadium dioxide nanoparticles which make it ultra resistant to water. The presence of the conical shaped nanoparticles on the glass surface traps air and allows a minimal amount of water molecules to come up into contact with the glass surface. Therefore, when rainwater hits the glass surface, a spherical droplet of rain removes dirt, grime, and dust as it slides down. In conventional glass, raindrops adhere to the surface of the glass and leave behind marks or dirt as they slide down slowly.